Hi, everyone. My name is Jimena Saras. I am a librarian here at CSU in the Morgan Library, and I'm excited to share with you information about the Education Abroad program called Identity Empowerment Through Cultural Literacy in Mexico. But first, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Vanessa. Hi, Jimena, and hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa Hayward, and I'm an Education Abroad Coordinator at Colorado State University. Welcome. Thank you, Vanessa. So this session will be is uh, recording and we will uh, pat, we hope that you would share this recording with anyone you think may be interested in learning about this program. Uh, all right, so let's get started with uh, the first slide, Vanessa. Thank you. So this education abroad program is designed to strengthen and embrace the student's sense of self through an educational experience that takes place in geographic region reflective of the student's heritage. The mission of this course is to grow and nurture global citizens by give, first invigorating students to learn about their own history and cultural wealth. This way, whether you decide to become an engineer, architect, doctor, lawyer, artist, scientist, writer, teacher, or entrepreneur, you can lead our tomorrow authentically by bringing your whole selves to wherever you choose to go with confidence about your sense of self. In this innovative education abroad experience, you will learn how to think critically about the information and messages you consume from media, academia, and society about your heritage and the world we live in. This program is especially poignant today when our Latin American countries, people and politics are in the headlines every day portrayed in ways that isolate us and create cleavages in our communities. You will receive lectures from Mexican scholars while standing in the middle of the Zócalo or walking through the halls of the Palacio Nacional, all the while reflecting on your own life mission and identities. Allow me to tell you a little bit about my story. I was born in Mexico City and raised in Chicago. I had the fortune of living in Mexico City all of my childhood summers. As I traveled back and forth, I began to understand from people that I wasn't American enough for the US and not Mexican enough for Mexico. Ni de aquí, ni de allá. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this feeling. I finally understood that they were all, all correct. I wasn't Mexican, I wasn't American. I'm a bicultural and bilingual woman who eats tofu tacos and dances salsa after yoga class. I understand that I applied for US citizenship, but my ancestral roots were here 1,000 were my ancestral roots were here thousands of years before this country was a twinkle in George Washington's eye. By returning to Mexico, I knew the voices that were missing from my Spanish classes. So I knew to reach out to literature by Gloria Anzaldúal, Carlos Fuentes, Pablo Neruda, and Laura Esquivel outside of class. I discerned from what people thought my heritage represents to what I knew my heritage represents. Together, we will develop our critical minds by way of reflecting on identity through a historical front through historical chronology. Uh, next, please. So you can see here a map of Mexico. Most of you are probably familiar. And we will be nestled right there in uh, the southern part of Mexico, Mexico City, or Ciudad de Mexico. Next slide, please. And oh, it looks a little, although a little blurry. Uh, Mexico has many different neighborhoods and we will be staying close to the one, the southern area uh, called Roma. If you've seen the film Roma, uh, it's going to be in that kind of historical area. It's in the hot pink uh, of the map that you see here before you. Next, please. And these are some pictures of the typical um, restaurants and neighborhood where we'll be staying. Uh, if you look at the picture on the top left, that's the Universidad La Salle. So we are partnering with Universidad La Salle uh, to, for housing. And while they have a very small campus, very similar to something like Regis University or maybe University of Denver, uh, 
stay, we will be staying in a hotel near this campus in this area. Um, these are beautiful pictures, typical pictures of the area where we will be staying, uh, living and studying. Next please. We will also be learning from Mexico, Mexican uh, professors and scholars, Sabiduría de Nuestra Gente, uh, through lectures and readings. This course will have a strong emphasis on authors frequently left out of the curriculum in American higher education. We will also develop critical thinking skills throughout, through reflection and writing. These pictures are pictures of the two other campuses we will also be visiting and meeting other students from these campuses. The hope is to also uh, engage students in Mexico to participate in a virtual classroom with us. And so the top picture here is the Universidad Anahuac and the middle picture are students at Universidad Anahuac and then the bottom picture is a very famous picture of the library on the campus Universidad Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, UNAM, is the more popular way of um, popular form. All right, next please. Uh, the first module, and we will have, uh, we will do this course through modules. Uh, the first module will start with Mesoamerica and we will reflect on our indigenous culture and identity. We will learn these modules in the location where, uh, in the location uh, that is linked to that module. Uh, so in this case, when we learn about Mesoamerica and the indigenous culture and history, we will actually be, uh, present in this uh, Teotihuacan, in this uh, religious area of Mexico called uh, Teotihuacan. And we will actually be on these pyramids as you listen to lectures about indigenous culture. And then at, in the afternoon, we'll be reflecting on our identity and indigenous culture. Next, please. The second module is you will learn about colonialism and reflect on oppression and identity. So Mexico City is actually built on what used to be Tenochtitlan. And lots of the castles and in this case Palacio Nacional and other uh, art buildings were built on top of the indigenous uh, architecture. And see, here you can see lots of little bubbles of different parts we will visit. So if you look in the bubble on the left with the mural, that's a typical Diego Rivera mural. And that's over in uh, Castillo de, Ch de Chapultepec, I believe. Actually, I think I'm, thinking I'm not, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the Castillo de Chapultepec. And then you will also see the Castillo de Chapultepec, which is at, over at the top. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, urban park where we will, it's the largest urban park in Latin America, and it's uh, Parque de Chapultepec. And in this park is a beautiful castle called Castillo de Chapultepec. And so again, we will have all of, all of these lectures in these buildings. Next, please. The third model we will learn is La Revolución or the Mexican Revolution and reflect on our resistance and identity. A lot of protests, a lot of pol political uh, events to this day happen in the middle of Zócalo, which is a, a huge plaza in the middle of Mexico City. And here's one picture. And I think this is a reenactment of the Mexican Revolution or celebration of the Mexican Revolution right in the middle of uh, El Zócalo, uh, that plaza in the middle of Mexico City. Next, please. Finally, we will explore modern architecture, contemporary museums, cinematography, and food, and reflect on our intersectionality and mixed identities. So oftentimes, we think of Latin America as maybe, we think of the history, we think of our indigenous culture, we think of uh, our colonial culture, but we don't really think about uh, Latin America as a modern place with modern architecture and um, in Mexico and in many other parts of Latin America, 
we are at the van vanguard of a lot of uh, of technology economies and uh, architecture and food and culture and much more. So we will explore that modern aspect of um, Mexico through a neighborhood called Polanco, uh, which is a beautiful modern neighborhood. Uh, and it includes this uh, museum that you see behind the text here. It looks like a beehive. Uh, that's one of the newer museums uh, in Polanco, which is located, also located in Mexico City. And we'll talk about our intersectionality. So I'm not just a Latina woman, I'm also a mother, I'm also a first generation student um, uh, and, and have other identities uh, that also influence the experience that I have and how I consume information. Okay, so now I will uh, discuss the next steps in making this education abroad experience a reality, such as the application process, financial aid, and deadlines. Your turn. Thank you, Jimena. So everyone, it has been so exciting to listen to Jimena's words describe this program. She is one of our many CSU faculty members who is leading a CSU staff and faculty education abroad program. Um, and I am honored to be her and your education abroad coordinator on this journey. So today, over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk with you about how to apply and how to find the information that you need to make a decision on our program website which is at international.colostate.edu. We're going to review the application together. We're going to talk about financial aid. And I do want to highlight that financial aid has their own email address listed on this screen, specialprograms at colostate.edu. If you would like to reach out to them to schedule a one-on-one -on -one financial aid and education abroad advising appointment. And lastly, we're going to cover application deadlines. This program has a priority deadline of July 1st and a final deadline of September 15th. So if you learn about this program and you think this is for me, I want to do it, then I encourage you to apply by the priority deadline. If you need some more time to apply, the final deadline is September 15th. So without any delay, let's go and take a look at the program website. And in order to look at the program website, we're going to go to International Programs homepage and we are going to click on Education Abroad. And once we get to Education Abroad, we'll select the program search. And from the program search, we can type in a few keywords. In this case, identity empowerment. The name of the program is Identity Empowerment Through Cultural Literacy in Mexico, and we'll see that it's the only program that comes up. We'll select that program, and on the next page, we'll see first we land on the overview page, and we'll notice that there are six tabs across the middle, and each one of these tabs takes us to further information. So on the overview tab, we glean some basics about the program, notably that the program travels over winter break, January 3rd through 13th. As Jimena said, the program is centered in Mexico City. We see Jimena's contact information here. If you happen to have any questions about the program when it's done, particularly academics or life in Mexico City, Jimena is the person to reach out to. We see the eligibility requirements listed, and then we also see myself listed as the Education Abroad Program Coordinator. Under the Academics tab, Jimena did a fantastic job of explaining the academics. It's really clear that this is a passion area for her. I share this additional information for you, and I also want you to work with your academic advisor to make sure that this program will fit into your degree plan. You'll see that the program has a one credit course and that's LI382A. Next, I'm gonna talk about costs and funding and I'm gonna go into detail on our budget sheet. In Education Abroad, we're very transparent about cost because we know that cost can be a big deciding factor 
in whether or not a program is a good fit for a student. So any program that you would partake in through Education Abroad has a budget sheet listed on the program website. So let's take a look at that one now. I'm gonna mention first off that this budget sheet is based on winter break 2020, the winter break that we just passed through. And we are working on this winter break 2021 budget currently. So when that budget is available, you'll see this budget sheet update. But for example purposes today, we're gonna to use last year's budget. So when you look at one of Education Abroad's budgets, you'll always see the same types of items listed here. The first thing you're gonna see is the tuition portion. And this course is offered through CSU Online and they have a flat rate of tuition at $476 per credit. So this is a one credit course and you'll pay $476. Next, you will see the program charge at about $2,000. $500. And this program charge goes towards the vast majority of your expenses in country. So this is going to cover your daily lodging. This will cover many meals. This will cover any entrance fees to museums. It will cover the cost of lecturers, transportation within Mexico. Next, you'll see a $400 education abroad fee. And this is a fee that all students at CSU pay when they go abroad and the cost for going abroad during a break is $400. Next, we see the insurance, and this is international travel health insurance with evacuation coverage. This is the same insurance that Jimena is covered under as your program leader. This insurance is fantastic coverage for you all. And lastly, under the billable subtotal, we see a round trip airfare. So this program does have a group flight and the Education Abroad Office reserves that flight, which is a great benefit to participating students because you don't have to book your own flight. We take care of that for you. And your Education Abroad experience begins the minute that you arrive at Denver International Airport. So we see a billable subtotal of about $4,210. Billable subtotal means the amounts that will be charged to your CSU student account, otherwise known as your CSU bill. Below the billable subtotal are non-billable items. And these are items that we're not going to charge to your CSU student account, but that we think you may have to pay for in order to prepare and have this experience abroad. So those of you who do not already have a passport are encouraged to get your passport generally costs about $175. And the Education Abroad Office at Colorado State University is a passport acceptance facility. You can learn more information about our passport acceptance facility on the Education Abroad website. We also see personal expenses estimated at $200. And this is money for you to spend within Mexico on your own personal expenses. Below, we see important information on the billing timeline. So anyone who applies to the program and is accepted will pay a 200, excuse me, will pay a $50 application fee. And those people who are accepted and commit to the program will pay a $200 program deposit. And we see the dates listed here when those charges are assessed. If you are a Pell Grant recipient, and if you are interested in receiving a waiver for the application fee and the program deposit, I would like you to email me directly. And you're going to see my email information at the end of the presentation. Below, we see more information on financial aid, and I will go over that in just a little bit. So back on our program website, as we scroll down, we see more further information on financial aid. So let's take a little bit of a dig into that. Let's take a look at scholarship. So this will take us back to the Education Abroad public website. And the first scholarship opportunity that we see is the Education Abroad Scholarship Common Application. This is an Education Abroad Scholarship Common Application offered through the CSU Education Abroad Office. This program is a winter break program, so it has an application deadline of September 15th. 
for the common scholarship application. And we call it a common scholarship application because it's one application for all the scholarships that the Education Abroad Office offers. So below we'll see some examples of those types of scholarships. And then as we go down further, we see other areas where you could apply for scholarships. Let's take a look at some of those. So I encourage you to read through this information and see if these scholarships are applicable to you. So going back to our program website and then going on to dates and deadlines, please note that the early application deadline is July 1st and that the final deadline is September 15th. You'll see some more information here on housing and meals. And then lastly, the application process. So on most of the pages that we've been on, you've seen an apply now button. When you're ready, or if you're interested in applying to the program, you simply click on apply now. And these are the bits, the um, application items that you would be completed. And I'm gonna show you a simulation right now of the application website. So after you click on apply now, you'll enter with your CSU EID and you'll be taken to the application website. Every item that has an unchecked box is an item that you need to complete. So you would click on the item, read through it, and do whatever needs to be done to satisfy the item. And when it's complete, you'll see a checkbox. So please do note the $50 application fee read through the travel advisory liability waiver, complete the education abroad agreement and release, the group flight, passport requirement, and the essay, paying for education abroad video and quiz. And don't miss down here on the lower left-hand side, the recommendations. This is an academic recommendation and it's an electronic request. So you're going to want to think about someone in your life at CSU, perhaps a CSU instructor or an academic advisor or an academic success coordinator who could speak to your academic achievements at CSU and your academic ability. You can let them know that this recommendation takes only five minutes. It's an online form recommendation. It's not as intense as requesting a recommendation for undergraduate or graduate school. So once you complete all of these items, then the Education Abroad Office and HEMENA will be able to review your application. I did want to go back and touch a little bit more on financial aid. And if we see here with financial aid, um, this is a winter break program and winter break programs are part of spring financial aid and your spring number of credits. So if you're only at 11 credits for the spring and you need one more credit to bring you to 12 to make you full time, a one credit winter break education abroad program would be a neat thing to do to bring you to 12 credits. Um, you can use 99% of your current financial aid to go abroad with you. And we do have a great relationship with the Office of Financial Aid. As I mentioned earlier, um, we have coordinators within the Office of Financial Aid who are happy to work with you, and they do have their own specific website and um, detailed information, including a video that you could watch. So at this point, um, I have covered everything that I wanted to share with you, and I would encourage you, if you're interested, to submit your application by July 1st. And I'm going to turn it over to Jimena to see if she has any questions for me. I do. I'm thinking uh, something that we'll be thinking about right now is uh, what if uh, the, we continue to re remain in the COVID-19 pandemic situation? What will happen to uh, this education abroad program? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, at this point, we are running all of our fall and forward programs, so that includes winter break. However, our number one priority is student health and safety. So there are various resources that we use to assess safety around the world. And 
if it's required that we cancel this program for winter break, if a student has already paid the $50 application fee and the $200 program deposit, those will be refunded to the student's CSU account. And at that point, when we have to cancel a program, we work with the program leader, in this case, Jimena, to come up with options. Would it be possible to postpone the program to a future semester? And ideally, that's what we would like to do if a program is canceled. And the two other things that I think students may be asking is, what if I don't have uh, the 2.5 GPA requirement? What if I don't meet that requirement? Mm -hmm. Do I still have an opportunity to attend? That's a really good question, Humana. Um, we do set the requirement at a 2.5 minimum GPA. However, if your GPA is below 2.5, you'll be asked to write a brief statement explaining why your GPA is below 2.5 and that will be shared with the program leader to make a decision on your application. So if your GPA is below a 2.5 and you're interested in the program, I do encourage you to apply to the program. Yeah, absolutely. And the last question is, uh, right now money is tight and I don't even have the $50 for the wave right now. Um, and that uh, poses a hardship for me, but um, is, that, is there a way to get that waived? Yeah, so if a student is a Pell Grant recipient, they should email me directly, and you'll see my email address listed on the screen, vanessa.hayward at colostate.edu, and you'll be able to receive a waiver for the $50 application fee and the $200 program deposit. Great, those, I think those are uh, final questions that I've heard uh, quite a bit from students in the past. Thank you for bringing those up, Humana. They were really important. So thanks, Vanessa, for giving us um, that overview. And uh, for those who are listening to this webinar, thank you so much for listening and for your interest. And uh, we are here to answer all of your questions. And if you want more details about the curriculum or want to take a look at maybe a draft of the syllabus to decide, uh, if you need me to make a phone call or call a, a, a mom or a tia or whoever um, is the person giving you permission, I'd be happy to have a conversation with um, anyone to support your uh, attendance in this opportunity. So have a great afternoon or morning or night, whenever it is that you're watching this. And thanks for your interest. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.